Hey guys, I'm Gene Del Sala, president of Audioholics, and we are here at the CD 2016 Expo Show in Dallas, Texas. We're here the night before. We're going to be covering the show for the next two days. You can see our signage right here. And we're going to be looking at all the new tech, all the major tech that affects our Audioholics readers, like the new AV receivers, the Atmos receivers. We're going to be checking if these guys are rating these things correctly with the power, because as you know, everybody likes to fudge the power specs when they add more channels. We're going to be talking about the networking features that they're adding. Everybody's got their own solution. You got Den and Heels for the whole home audio solution. You got Yamaha Music Cast. You got NAD with their Blue Sound. You got Google Cast, Firecast, and I'm sure there's a bunch of others that I have not mentioned in this video, but we will be covering in our live coverage of the show. We're also going to be looking at high end speakers. There's some really high end stuff here. We got Paradigm doing their 9H speaker, a $30,000 speaker, I can't wait to hear that. RBH Sound is here with their SX system with the AMT tweeter. JBL Synthesis, I mean, there's just so much cool stuff here, guys. This is the show to be at if you're a home theater geek or if you're really into an audiophile kind of uh, person, like we are. And then we're also gonna be looking at sound bars because as we understand it, sound bars have come a long way in the last couple of years. So we're gonna be doing a lot more coverage of sound bars, but I could be ignoring this anymore because I know you guys want it. Bring it. So stay tuned, check out our coverage online, check out our coverage on our YouTube video, and please subscribe to our channel, hit like, and uh, thank you for your support. The Artisan booth, we're here with Matthew Labruzzo, uh, Director of Engineering. And we're going to be talking about their new Backpack P5 system. He's going to give us a rundown of what it is and why it's so cool. Here you go, Matthew. So thanks for coming by the Artisan booth. And again, uh, this is the Backpack P5. Basically a compact uh, audio-video product that has full amplifier power uh, for five channels. It's 100 watts for the front three, 50 watts for the back two. That's all included right there on that Phoenix connector. LFE output on the back as well, so you got any uh, subwoofer output there. Uh, also, if you keep going there over to the right, you've got three HDMI ins, one HDMI out, and that is HDMI that is 2.0 with the 2.2 HDCP. Keep on going, you've got a uh, analog input there on the bottom and an optical all the way to the right. The other mini jack there is for an external IR sensor. So let me ask you something, Matthew. Is this basically taking the place of an AV receiver? Yes, exactly that. And the beauty of it is you can fit this behind a TV set. It's only 1.1 inches tall, a uh, little under a square foot, built-in power supply, so you don't have to have an external block. The other nice things, you have Bluetooth input, uh, DLNA input, as well as all the rest of the, the full feature set. And it does Dolby Digital and DTS. Dolby Digital DTS decode. And it's a five channel, correct? Five channel. Okay, do you know what the price is on this? Yeah. Suggested retail is $1,200. Okay, well we're gonna go take a listen because they have one set up and we'll let you know, guys know how it sounds. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Hey guys, we're over at the Onkyo booth checking out their new pre-pro and new uh, AV receivers. This is the PR Z5100, 11.2 channel THX certified, Atmos DTSX. Pretty much everything you need, 11.2 channels. It's got balanced outputs. It's got balanced outputs on the subwoofers, two subwoofer outputs. I'm not sure if those are independent or if they're just parallel, but we'd have to find out. And then we got their new receivers, the 11.2 channel. 3100. There's a bunch of them here. And uh, you notice a little pattern here with these Atmos receivers now that they're rating them, they're inflating the power ratings big time. You know, they used to rate power in these receivers at 8 ohms, at least two channels driven, like FTC specifies. Now they're doing one channel driven at 6 ohms at pretty much 1% distortion or nothing. So their 200 watt rating is really more like 140 watts. This isn't their flagship, this is their middle line board. But you gotta be really careful in how they're rating these receivers, guys. There's the RZ1100, it's a 9.2 channel. The guy that appears the specs here, blood source, 
Oh, yeah. yeah he's, he's, on, he's on Amazon. As, uh, they look really nice. Warehouse buys. Loaded something. with features. Yeah, they look yeah, like they're built pretty well. Um, I'd like to see bigger power supplies, to be honest with you, when you start pumping 9 or 11 channels into these things. But you know what? As long as they have some preamp outputs, you could always supplement that with an Emotivo, Monoprice amp, Outlaw, you name it. You can see that preamp outputs are really critical, so make sure when you're getting a new receiver, spend a little extra money and get one that has multi channel preamp outputs. Hey guys, we are here with Jason Leo of OPPO and Jason brought a little surprise for us that we didn't know was going to happen here at Cedia. So Jason, why don't you tell us what you got here on the table? Uh, sure, uh, what we got here is uh, our UltraHD UHD uh, player. Uh, it's a UltraHD Blu-ray player. We call it uh, UDP203 and uh, it's an engineering sample. Uh, we are still actively working on it. I know that many of you are looking forward to a player from Oppo, so uh, we don't want to disappoint you. And uh, as soon as we get a prototype, I would like to share the information with you and make sure that we get it right and so there's no specific release date. Just want to let you know we are hard at work working on it. So let me ask you, Jason, if we're going to compare this to a BDP-103, other than its HD capabilities, are there any new features that it brings to the table? Well, the main feature is the HD capability. Uh, we are also working on the uh, audio side, trying to get more format support, such as a uh, higher sample rate uh, PCM audio and higher sample rate DSD. Uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, of course, there's... Uh, the stuff you would expect from a UHD player like the 4K resolution, HDR, the HDR10 flavor and other flavors we are working on, and uh, USB 3.0 for uh, the higher throughput that you will need for 4K video. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, one difference from this player and the previous player is uh, now we got Wi-Fi built in, uh, so you no longer use a dongle. We found a way to utilize the MIMO technology to get really good Wi-Fi coverage, even with uh, metal chassis. Okay, now you're also going to have a BD, uh, a UDP 205, I'd imagine, right? An audio file player, kind of like the BDP 105. Uh, yes, we all usually have uh, a two-tier product structure. So once this player is uh, fully developed, uh, then we'll be working on an uh, audio file upgrade version, looking into better animal audio, better DAC, this kind of technologies. Now, let me ask you, what are the prices going to be on this UDP-203? Is it going to be more expensive than the 103 that's currently shipping now, or is it going to be around the same? Well, we are hoping to keep the same price. Uh, as uh, of now, there's uh, a lot of uh, cost accounting not done yet, so we really don't know exactly what the retail price uh, will land, uh, where it is, but uh, we're trying all the way possible to not increase the price. Okay, and what about your up conversion? Is it the same kind of chipsets that you had in the BDPs 103 and 105 for going from, you know, DVD to 1080p and 4K, or what's different than the chipsets on that? Uh, up converting is always important. We know that uh, customers have a huge library of materials. They want to show the best quantity in their uh, 4K TV. So um, we are not uh, using an external up converter chip this time. Instead, uh, we put all this experience and expertise of our up converting technology into firmware development and we actually uh, co-developed the main decoder chip together with our semiconductor supplier so that all this good up converting uh, performance will be carried over into this player but in a single uh, system uh, chip kind of solution. That sounds really exciting Jason. It sounds like there's a lot of good stuff going on with these players. Can you kind of give us an, an estimated date as when we're going to start seeing this hit the market? Uh, sure, we are hoping to get this done by end of this year. Uh, however, as uh, our customers always know Oppo, we don't have a 
fixed release date. We are not trying to catch uh, press event or anything like that. So it takes as long as it takes for our engineering team to get it right. And then once we feel uh, everything is ready to release, we'll release this product. Well, Jason, I hope you release one of the first samples to me because I'm looking forward to checking this thing out. Sure, I will do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for bringing this new scoop to us. Guys, we're over at the Denon booth here looking at their new AVR 6300H receiver. We covered this already in a preview, but I wanted to show it to you here. It's a 9.2 channel, Atmos DTSX. You know, they're doing the funny stuff with the power ratings again, the 260 watt. That's like a burst rating. It's, you know, you and I, we all know it's BS, just like what we saw with Ankyo and everybody else. But this is an honestly rated 140 watt receiver. Nine channels built in, Odyssey XT32. It's got Denon Heos built into it as well. And you see the plethora of connections on the back. Solid receiver, solid offering here. Check it out. Hey guys, we are here with Marshall Courier of NAD, and he's going to discuss their upgrades to their existing AV receivers. So Marshall, let me give you the mic. Thank you, Gene. All right, gang, so let's walk you through what we're seeing here at CEDIA 2016 with NAD Electronics. We're showing a new version 3 of the T758 and the T777. These new version 3 receivers come already preloaded with the HDMI Ultra HD 4K module. That's the T758 you're looking at there on the back panel. This model is going to be available uh, after the uh, next couple of months of updates are coming out for our current products. So likely the late end of 2016 or the front, front end of 2017. And these receivers will again include HDMI 4K Ultra HD, Dolby Atmos, and our own Blue OS high resolution streaming platform. The T777V3 will be at $24.99, and that will be hot rotted with HDMI 4K, Dolby Atmos, with DTSX, likely after a firmware update, and you'll be seeing seven 4K HDMI inputs on the back there, uh, and one on the front with Blue OS high resolution streaming all built in. Marshall, I have to ask you a question, my friend. I'm noticing your power ratings here, and I'm noticing a trend with Atmos receivers from your competitors that are getting more powerful with more channels with more channels added. What's the deal with that? Why are your power, load power ratings lower? Tell me what's going on. Now, one of the things NAD's done for many years, Gene, is what we call full disclosure power. Full disclosure power is an FTC rated 20K to 20 hertz all channels driven continuously into the appropriate speaker load. So we're not fudging numbers. And be very careful, everybody, when you see a company that's adding channels of amplification to their home theater receivers for things like Atmos and DTSX, but the weight of that home theater receiver isn't get, getting it, it's not getting any heavier, be very careful about that company's power specification. If they're adding more channels, but it's not getting any heavier, there's some monkey business there. Well, we saw this trend recently that these some of these competitors are rating one channel driven at six ohms at 1% distortion and it's just complete bonkers so you really got to look at apples to apples when you're comparing power specs i couldn't agree more gene i love my competitors this is a great industry and i won't say anything bad about them but do be cautious ladies and gentlemen can we take a look at the module yeah so let's talk about the upgrade process for the current customer base you're looking here at the vm 300 again this is the nad vm 300 module that will be included in these new version 3 receivers now, if you don't have or don't intend to purchase a version 3 receiver or you um, have a current NAD product, you can upgrade to this VM300 HDMI module. If you purchased your NAD uh, receiver and qualify for an upgrade program, the VM300 uh, module will be available from your dealer at no cost after a certain date. 
If you purchased a 758, a T758 home theater receiver, this HDMI module at retail is $199. So we have a couple different upgrade paths depending on when you purchased your existing NAD equipment or if you're in the market for a new home theater receiver, check us out at nadelectronics.com. If you've got any questions about how to upgrade your home theater receiver, maybe you don't want to do it yourself, maybe you do, maybe you just have some general questions, we've got a, a chat client and support email there at nadelectronics.com in the top right corner. Awesome, Marshall. Appreciate all your support here today. It's great learning about these products, and it's great to know you guys have upgrade paths for your existing customers. Awesome, Gene. Thanks for coming, and thanks everyone for watching.